probably seven, eight, nine page statement, which is basically the achievements and the outcome documents. Do you want me to read it or do you want me to just uh, distribute later on and you can just ask the questions? Questions na lang. Dapat hindi na ako nagtanong. Okay, so again, after saying thank you and through God's grace, uh, let me just announce that it was very successful. Uh, all of the ministers um, congratulated the president and myself uh, for the Philippines uh, chairmanship. Everyone's looking forward to November. Much has been done, and we'll give you a copy of the uh, statements, achievements, and <clears throat> and some of the outcome documents. So um, maybe I should just answer questions. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, may we call on uh, Phil Starr, Russell? Obi, can, can I request, Pala, if there are follow-up questions on the same topic, okay, sir. why don't you ask it right af as a follow-up so that we, we can finish one topic then to the next? No? Okay, sir. We'll do, sir. Uh, Phil Starr? <coughs> yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Hi, sir. Hi. Um, good afternoon. Rosette Adel po of Phil Starr. Um, <coughs> just want to ask regarding the statement of North Korea uh, that they will not put the nukes and ballistic rockets on the negotiation table. Uh, what's the Philippines' reaction to this po and the other ministers' reaction po? Okay. First of all, any instability is bad and is wrong. No? Thank you. Why is it bad and wrong? Because you can only have peace if there's stability. And you can only have development and progress when there's peace and stability. There are situations when there is instability, yet life goes on. But there are uh, situations when the instability is so disturbing that uh, it affects too many areas or facets of uh, life. And uh, the Korean Peninsula is... Uh, a worldwide concern and problem as of now, uh, not only because there are uh, inter -ballistic, intercontinental ballistic missiles with possible nuclear weapons uh, can hit uh, several regions, including the United States, including ASEAN, but because their testing can lead to uh, accidents and is definitely leading to escalation. As you've seen, the U.S. and uh, um, South Korea has uh, responded by their own uh, joint exercises. No? So the stand of ASEAN was quite clear. No? We had long meetings about this and basically <clears throat> and basically um, everyone and anyone yung human nature uh, availability of being the peacemaker. But one by one, especially those who have close ties to North Korea, were saying, you know, how can you play peacemaker if they won't open a door or if uh, they will not listen? If they simply want to say what they want to say, and <clears throat> they're not only saying it in words, but they're saying it through testing their missiles, uh, they're, they're not giving us any choice. That's why, although unprecedented or um, although we usually wait for the ARF <clears throat> before we come out with a statement, we came out with a strong statement uh, to show the world, the world that we are with them, to show the United Nations that was going to vote on uh, a resolution uh, that we are with them in... Uh, uh, that we want stability to return to uh, the Korean Peninsula. No? Kasa, um, as you know, there are certain points that we all agreed on, denuclearization, that uh, if it does happen, it has to be very viable. There should be transparency. Um, of course, we take note that uh, China, in one of the discussions, you know, and other countries said that um, you also have to look at the security of North Korea. And the Iran deal was mentioned 
that if everyone is really uh, willing to persevere and, and willing to work on it, we might be able to come up with a peace deal also with uh, North Korea. But the problem is the ASEAN member states and ASEAN as a whole saw the deadlock with North Korea re refusing to give any opening. You know, but if we made our uh, statement <clears throat> one way or um, we didn't give an opening for ASEAN to play a, a role, um, there might not be any other avenue for, the, for talks. So we wanted North Korea to, uh, or the DPRK, to know that they were welcome to the ARF because it's a venue for dialogue. No. Uh, I was against meeting as all of the foreign ministers agreed that we will not meet on a bilateral um, manner or meeting with the uh, foreign minister of DPRK, except that they all tasked me as chair to meet him to convey two messages, to physically give him the, res the resolution, <clears throat> Then secondly, to explain to him that we all want peace, but if they don't open any door or they don't give us the light at the end of the tunnel or any options, what can we do but to su support the rest of uh, the world? You know? So that's, that's basically the ins and outs of, of that issue. Can I ask another question? Sorry. On another matter, did Tillerson... Could we take uh, oh, uh, the questions from, on a similar... Oh, okay. On a similar okay. topic, Muna. Uh, uh, let's uh, finish you, that. Uh, can we have a CNN, please, uh, Buena? <coughs> I think he has a similar question on, uh, yeah. on the DPRK. Sir, the exchange of ple pleasantries between uh, President Duterte and uh, North Korean Foreign Minister lingered for quite a while in comparison to the exchange of pleasantries with the other ministers. And you were there right beside the president. So, sir, can you tell us um, about what was uh, made in that exchange since it was also cut in the pool video? Well, first of all, uh, not only DPRK, to other ministers that either he knew before or first time to meet or there's been some issues in the past. So, as you all know, uh, ARF is uh, basically the only regional um, dialogue or uh, a forum where the uh, DPRK sends its foreign minister. So there's no other venue that you can hear him. So naturally when the president said the pleasantries and there was a short uh, exchange, but it's basically uh, pleasantries. But uh, given the fact that this is the only place uh, and only time that they'll be able to uh, see each other, there was some exchange. May I just take note that um, in April, during the leaders' summit, uh, President Trump, uh, just to recall, called President Duterte, if he can pr call President Xi, Xi Jinping of uh, China, uh, to make representations for uh, North Korea. So the president took that both literally and figuratively. You know? Literally, meaning he literally uh, asked uh, for a phone call and he did have a conversation with President Xi. And secondly, he took it figuratively that the U.S. and other countries want to find a solution, and the president is always available to play a peacemaker. But as I reported to him uh, uh, briefly yesterday, is that the ASEAN tried, but uh, so far no opening. So actually, the ball is in the hands of uh, th there are two balls. No, one is in the hands of North Korea for them to give some kind of opening for discussions. The other is in the rest of the world, what do we do to prevent violence? And many in the, um, or conflict and violence, many in the ARF were saying, we want them to prevent, we want to prevent conflict and violence, but you cannot also prevent conflict by uh, doing it through force. So it's sort of a, um, it, it's sort of a paradox, because how do you get out their nuclear weapons without using weapons if they don't do it voluntarily. On the other hand, the U.S. has said they will not allow them to fully develop uh, their capabilities in nuclear. No? So that's, 
it's a very dangerous deadlock that we're all hoping and praying uh, that can be resolved soon. Thank you, sir. Uh, um, any other questions on the DPRK? Uh, yes. Uh, you, you, uh, DPRK, please. Any other question? On, uh, yes, Jonah. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, you already touched on this earlier about the uh, ASEAN members deciding not to meet bilaterally with the DPRK. Could you just tell us more about the thought processes and the, pro uh, the thought processes how the grouping decided to assign the Philippines as chair to represent the, to represent the organization in meeting with, uh, with Mr. Rhee? And during your discussions with him, was there any, uh, any mention or any allusion to how the president described um, described the North Korean leader as uh, some sort of a fool? Thank you. During the sorry, the last part of your question. Sorry. During your meeting with <laughs> Mr. Rhee, was there any uh, mention okay. or allusion to mm. Mr. Mm. Duterte's description of mm. the North Korean leader yes. as some sort of a fool? As you know, any kind of uh, discussion during retreats are restricted and I cannot quote. No. Having said that, I can tell you the thought process. So we started out by a discussion first on the uh, issue itself, on uh, um, DPRK. Uh, I think three things were brought up. First was, do we do something now? Remember we met after dinner in the first night, so that was August 4, before our plenary the next day. And then we had a lunch retreat. And it's the first time that the lunch retreat was without the senior officials and no uh, note takers. No? So it was really a heart to heart. And I think it worked so well that they decided, uh, we decided to do it every year that way. You know? Just 10 people around the table, um, 10 passionate uh, members of ASEAN just talking as equals. So that was the first thing, no? what, what, what do we do? So to answer that first question, we had to say our stand regarding the issue. So we decided to have the resolution. No? Second point, which is in connection with the first, is that some member states did say that they have a relationship. Remember, North Korea has uh, um, embassies in some of the ASEAN countries. <clears throat> and. They, they stated that we have tried in the past to be peacemakers. We have offered them. Um, we, we told them we can play uh, the role, but they want us to listen to them. Uh, they listen to us, but they don't really listen. No? Um, it was slightly mentioned whether or not the U.S. proposal uh, not to allow them ARF, but we didn't really discuss it that much because, number one, the U.S. did not file it as a formal proposal. Secondly, there's, I don't think there's a mechanism to remove someone from the dialogue at this point in time, or if there is, there's been no precedent. And a lot of members felt that, uh, you know, that's why there's a dialogue. You might not want to hear what that person will say about his country or another country, but let him or, he, or she say it. You know? So um, the third part was after we agreed on the resolution, we called our senior officials to ask um, them to draft the language. I just made the statement that at the time, my voice was already quite bad. So I told them, you tell me what to do. If you ask me, I'd rather not meet him and just give the document, uh, just so that it's very clear what our stand is. But the sentiment of uh, the consensus, actually, it wasn't even the majority. The consensus was, no, Alan, see him not as the Philippines, but as our chair, and give him that, but explain it to, to them, that ASEAN wants to play a productive role, but they have to give, uh, they have to budge, or they have to give us an indication, or they have to say the word, or open the door. So basically, that was the thought process. So when, when I did meet him, <clears throat> um, basically, tatlo lang yung thesis niya. Number one, they are a friendly nation with, uh, with ASEAN and with uh, many other nations. 
Number two, that this is brought about by the U.S., just as um, you've heard no, how he explained. And, that, uh, and basically, number three, that the, that the security of... Uh, 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 sorry, what, what he used is that the Korean Peninsula situation is a complex situation. And then he just said, you will hear my explanation later. So it was a short conversation, and there's no reference to... Uh, from the North Koreans about President Duterte. Thank you, sir. Last question on this topic, please. <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. My name is Alden Monzon, sir, from Kyodo News. Sir, I just want to ask, uh, where will where will ASEAN draw the line when it comes to the North Korean issue, sir? If they conduct more uh, missile tests, will it uh, consider putting forth more stringent measures, sir, uh, instead of just issuing statements that, that says they are concerned about the matter? The Thank line you, has already been drawn, and the ASEAN is supportive of the UN uh, Security Council uh, resolution, which includes uh, um, certain uh, steps uh, that will hopefully deny North Korea the resources to be able to continue developing uh, nuclear weapons. Okay. So actually, even before that statement, that statement must, must, was meant uh, as a strong message before the ARF. But even before that, uh, individual countries, uh, individual ASEAN states uh, had their stance. So for example, the Philippines has continued to issue this statement, has continued to support uh, the UN uh, Security Council. Okay, thank, thank you, Alden. Uh, let's move on to another topic. Uh, yeah, but sir, we just uh, figure out the point. Yes, when, sir, go ahead. When you say draw the line, you know, and we talk beyond sanctions, that was I was saying a while ago. It's a paradox, eh? because if you authorize military action, you know, if you look at the the location, what will happen to uh, the Republic of Korea? And with the capabilities of uh, North Korea to launch, what will happen if they do launch missiles against uh, Japan or ASEAN countries? That's why I'm saying it's, I, in a sense, it's not only a complex situation. It's also very complex how to answer it. Eh? There's sort of a paradox there. The, how do you get, the, the goal is simple. Get them to denuclearize uh, peacefully. Diba? But what if they don't? So that's the big question to all of it. It's a big question to the U.S., big question to Japan, to ROK, to ASEAN. No? But we have to be very careful because you might think that you're helping and then uh, it will spark a bigger conflict. That's why some states spoke out saying <clears throat> that they're fully supportive of the U.N. Uh, resolutions, but there should be no use of force. Um, in dealing with the problem because it will lead to a larger conflict. Thank you, sir. Can we have a UN from Xinhua, please? Another topic. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm the reporter from Xinhua News Agency. I have a question about the uh, ASEAN-China relationship. Uh, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, uh, during the ASEAN-China Foreign Minister meeting, made seven suggestions on the China-ASEAN cooperation. <laughs> Uh, including seek to synergize the Belt and Road Initiative and the ASEAN Connectivity 2025, and seek to upgrade the China ASEAN FTA. And we also noted that in the AFM joint communique, the foreign minister said the region continues to reap the fruit of China's economic growth. So uh, my question is, uh, how do you comment the role that China play in this region, and uh, how do you think China are seen to further the economic cooperation in the future? Thank you. Okay. Well, let me start out by saying that we value all our dialogue partners, and <clears throat> let me also state that the superpowers of this world, may it be in the economic or military or both spheres, play an important role in peace and stability in any region in the world. So um, 
It's very hard to describe the role of one country in one region, but definitely in terms of economics, for example. No? China has shown uh, economic strength in what, the last 20 or more, more than 20 years, the last two decades. Um, its economy has also fueled growth uh, in ASEAN. Um, tourism from China, manufacturing, um, the infrastructure projects, you know. So China has played a very positive role uh, holistically you know, in the region. But a couple of years ago, there was some sort of instability because of issues in the West Philippine Sea, South China Sea. And this uh, instabilities, you know, caused certain reactions and strains in some relationship. Uh, the ASEAN ministers uh, took note of the positive developments in this last year. I in other words, we have to separate our overall relationship with any country and a dispute with that country. If you look at the South China Sea, the dispute is not only between China and the Philippines, China and Vietnam, China and Malaysia, China and Brunei. We have overlapping claims, but we did not allow this to disturb our good relationship with Brunei, uh, Vietnam, and Malaysia. So that's the efforts that are underway now, you know, that all the positive uh, sides that China can give in its relationship with ASEAN will not be disturbed uh, because of the uh, overlapping claims in the uh, South China Sea. And everyone is working hard at this point in time uh, to get there. Now, there are, of course, countries that are more passionate and use harsher language. There are countries that are as passionate but use as better language. No? But um, definitely, China will be uh, a driver uh, for uh, socio-economic uh, development in the region. Uh, there are other partners who also are drivers uh, of socio-economic development. Japan is an example. Thank you, sir. Um, maybe we have a fan from Rappler. Hi, sir. Um, um, many uh, Southeast Asian diplomats uh, said uh, in uh, interviews that you were not supposed to include uh, land reclamation and militarization in your joint communique because there was a lack of consensus. Uh, how and why did you end up uh, mentioning land reclamation and uh, militarization in your uh, joint communique? Let, let me start with the process. The joint communique is a negotiated uh, document. No? So meaning uh, you start with the zero draft, give it uh, to everyone, then draft after draft until everyone agrees uh, language. So there are different styles of doing it. You can go minimum, maximum, or middle. No? So uh, our team decided uh, to go with language that was more reflective you know, of uh, what was happening in the last year. Because the last document was the Ventian uh, document. No? And um, for example, you know, the, the concerns. You know, it, the, 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 the difficulty with words, it, it sometimes that does not truly express what is happening. So like if you say concerns, is it, how, how much of a concern is it? Is it a lingering concern? Is it a concern that can lead to conflict or in there, diba? So we have to be very careful about language. And remember, the JC is about the regional interest and not only your national interest. So when the other countries were saying it's here, it's not there, they use this language, they use that language, etc., they were just referring to some drafts. And I, I have to admit to you, there's also a lot of uh, gossip about it. Because when we were talking to the other foreign ministers, they were saying, they're saying this is here, they're not, they're saying this. But we had a very candid, uh, passionate uh, discussion. And I believe that uh, the joint communique uh, is a very balanced one. Um, it uh, articulates as close as possible uh, how ASEAN as a whole or most or some of its members uh, 
feel, but it's also a testament to our centrality, uh, meaning um, much of us compromised. Uh, those who wanted it stronger, compromised to weaker. Those who wanted it weaker, compromise to make it stronger, if I may use the stronger, weaker. Although I don't think stronger or weaker is um, the right words. I saw some news reports about stronger, weaker, you know, because the, the point is how reflective is it of the present uh, situation? Let me just give you an example. Now. If you're absent for five days and your editor gives you a letter saying, if you're absent, uh, absence is inexcusable, uh, uh, salary deduction, if you do it again, you're uh, out of the office. If for the next three months, you're never absent, but you're late. Of course, the document should not read, absence is inexcusable. It should be, tardiness is inexcusable. No? But to some, you say, sir, back it, it's weaker. Why did you tell that uh, employee before that, uh, you know, um, Absence is unexcusable. Now tardiness is discouraged because it's reflective, you know, except that in this case, it's a continuing situation. But uh, the, on the Philippine side, we're very optimistic. We have uh, made uh, several gains. Uh, if, if some of you were in the forum uh, with uh, the former secretaries, uh, Romulo, Alberto, uh, and uh, Albert Del Rosario, um, we mentioned to them that we respect and uh, will fight for the gains of the past, but our strategy has changed. The objective is the same, but the strategy has uh, changed. And we are very proud of the position of the Philippines now. Why? Before, our fishermen could not fish in several areas. Now there's a tentative fishing agreement. Secondly, before, everyone was building everywhere. Now we, uh, people are still building on what they hold, but we, no one's going to new areas. Uh, land cr uh, reclamations have uh, stopped. Um, we have agreements on the environment, on protecting marine resources. So, you know, we can argue, and I'm not saying one is right or one is wrong as to strategy, but let's agree on the goals, and let's agree on how we will measure our success or failures in terms of meeting those goals. Sir, quick follow-up. Yes. Um, categorically speaking, was the Philippines one of the countries that initially did not want to include land reclamation and uh, militarization in the joint communique? Yes. I you drafted it. Uh, we, we did it not want to include it. I didn't want to include it. Uh, why? It's not reflective of the present position. Well, uh, they're not uh, reclaiming land anymore. So why will you put it again... Uh, uh, this year, but since, yes, in fact, there was reclamations in the past, and you can start to reclaim again, and that was the general sentiment, I accepted it. So you, you start with a proposition. So uh, militarization, you know, there's militarization in the area, but there's also militarization outside. So every country has a right to defend itself. I'm not saying I agree with what China is doing, but the, the Philippines, in building trust and mutual respect with China, is asking China to understand us. So how can we do that without also understanding them? Having said that, we cannot compromise the freedom of navigation and oversight and uh, overflight. We cannot uh, compromise uh, international uh, law. Uh, we are signatories and believers in the, uh, in the UNCLOS. So I had a hand in what to put there, and I told my staff, you know, it doesn't matter what you put or you don't put at the zero draft, because what matters is it reflects what the majority uh, wants, you know, and it, actually it's more than a majority, because if I insisted that that won't be there, um, there's a possibility it won't be there, there's a possibility we won't have a joint communique, because that's the beauty the strength and weakness of uh, the ASEAN is the centrality, meaning we decide on consensus. It has to be 10-0. So it's a strength because so far we've found a way to vote together. But it could be a weakness because if only one of us didn't want a certain word there. But uh, I'll just remind everyone that just because a word or uh, a word is not in a statement or we did not make that statement in, in public, that doesn't mean our stand has changed, and that doesn't mean that we're not working uh, towards that goal. Uh, politicians and diplomats are so different. 
because politicians, and I can speak for politicians being a politician for 25 years, use the microphone. But the, and, and they try to gain the support for their stand. The problem is the window for negotiation closes. Diplomats are different. We try to keep quiet, we try to talk less, uh, so that the, the area for negotiation and the, the windows and doors are more uh, wide open. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, one more question on this topic, uh, Christian, uh, from ABS CBN. Sir, good evening. Good evening. So regarding the conditions set by the Chinese foreign minister, was this even discussed with ASEAN? Or were you surprised about this? Uh, not really. I think it's, uh, he was just stating a fact because you cannot really negotiate. Even the framework of uh, um, the COC, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm correct, but uh, I'll give a lot of credit to President Duterte. Uh, although it was an ASEAN consensus and it was negotiated with ASEAN, you know, the loud but calming voice of uh, President Duterte in the Philippines uh, allowed the better relations and the stability in the South China Sea, West Philippine Sea. So what happened? Uh, so everyone was more open to negotiations. At first, there was even a word in the framework of uh, being non-legally binding. But uh, at due time, China dropped that and just said, okay, uh, let's approve the framework, then let's go now to the uh, COC. So. You know, this isn't like conditions. Uh, if you if you listen to the conditions that there must be stability, um, you know, there there must be the status quo, etc. It's just like anyone telling you, "I'll only negotiate with you if it's in good faith," because if it's the same with us, why would we negotiate with them for the COC if they're moving? It's the same stand with the president, with the New People's Army and NDF. If you keep shooting our soldiers, why should we negotiate with you? You stop, we stop, we negotiate. So it's, it's, uh, I look at it more as a prerequisite, eh? and it's a logical prerequisite for me. No, that's why if you look at our statement, it's directed to all states, you know, that we shouldn't do anything in the area unilaterally and should not do anything that will um, uh, make us regress and lose trust and uh, lead to conflict. Thank you, sir. Uh, next Just question. one follow-up. But, sure. sir, aren't you sure. giving China too much, uh, basically a free pass in these negotiations? Number one, the Philippines was the one that sought to remove or not to mention land reclamation and militarization. Because you're talking here uh, with, uh, what's, with China. What's your They're the ones actually yes. involved in the land reclamation. No, what's your objective? Is your objective to shame China or confront them? Or is your objective peace and stability in the South China Sea? and get the COC passed. Whether the land reclamation was there or not, and it is there, the reality on the ground is that people have stopped reclaiming. And the reality on the ground is not, it's just not China who did reclamation. Diba? So why is it viewed as we are giving into China? This, this isn't a battle, this isn't a competition. China is not our enemy. The, our, our policy is friends to all, enemy to none. So if you want us to take that attitude against China, do you mean you want us to have an aggressive attitude against Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei because they're also claiming features that we are claiming? The, the framing is wrong. Eh? The framing during the, the Kino administration I respect, it's Philippines versus China because the, the situation on the ground called for that. The situation now is that we're talking, we're gaining ground. So if we're gaining ground in the South China Sea, can you not reflect that in your statements so that you can get more ground? So there are some whose uh, political objective is to shame uh, China. So that's why their basis is, is it for or against China? The Department of Foreign Affairs, and I believe the ASEAN, is not for shaming any of our uh, dialogue partners, not even for any of our rivals, not even for co-claimants, but to find a peaceful resolution to all of this. 
that's why with all due respect um, to ABS-CBN, the, the online that said that we have a weaker statement, I disagree. I think that framing is the old framing of the question. And I think it's uh, biased because um, it's not about a weaker or stronger statement, but it's really about um, is it more reflective or is it unreflective of the situation? But basically, sir, land reclamation basically it just consistent with the go DOC, ahead. although we all know that the DOC was non-binding. But yes. basically, you could see consistency by so, putting it still in the discussions now. The, the question is not consistency because we consistently bring it up. It is in the stand of the Philippines that there should be no, reclam uh, no reclamation, no uh, efforts for that. So it's not about consistency. It's about diplomatic language that will lead us to our goals. Having said that, uh, 10 minds are better than one. So you can also ask, for example, the other states, why did they want it weaker? Why did they want it stronger? It's just that as chair, I started the zero draft. But we did not shove it uh, down the throat of uh, uh, anyone because we believe in Asian, ASEAN centrality. You know? But uh, I just wanted to emphasize, we see the South China Sea and the Philippine-China relationship much, much different mm -hmm. of how it was framed in the Aquino administration. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Uh, Hi, have uh, questions. Secretary Hi, Cayetano. Ben. Hello, JC Gutinga of CNN Philippines. Sir, uh, during uh, Foreign Minister Wang's uh, interview with Philippine journalists at the PICC, uh, he was asked about uh, whether China would agree that the Code of Conduct be legally binding. And his answer was uh, that um, just like the DOC, if the 10 states plus China have signed the document, then they have the responsibility of making, well, the contents of that document come to life. In so many words, that was what he was saying. But uh, I just noticed that uh, he referred to, the, he was basically saying just like the DOC, he likens the COC to the DOC, and I think there is consensus that the DOC was not able to achieve its goal of maintaining the status quo because uh, the, the massive reclamation that China carried out took place even with the DOC in place. So what do we make of this statement from uh, Minister Wang? Does it mean that China, uh, China's commitment to the COC will only be as much as the commitment that it gave to the DOC. Okay. Um, take a step back now. You know, the, the reason why there's passion here, and I'm not saying um, people are not patriotic or people, uh, when I say that there's a different framing, as I said, I very much respect the past administration. I congratulate them for their gains. I even assured uh, Secretary Del Rosario, that we will not budge in, in our objective to secure our national uh, uh, territory and not give an inch of our uh, uh, economic entitlement, sovereignty, or sovereignty rights. No? Um, but having said all of that, this is a regional organization, ASEAN, and it's a dialogue. You cannot keep seeing things from your country's point of view. Meaning, what if we were not claimants? would we still have that same passion against China? Now, I want the non-claimants to have that passion because they're part of the ASEAN, and they want us to do that also. You know? So it's not always ASEAN versus China, China versus ASEAN, DOC, etc. But the reality is being um, the, the strength of China may be economically or in, 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 in other terms, some people are saying, you should join forces, sama-sama kayo, etc. But it's not that you have a claim here, you have a claim here, you have a claim here, and China is claiming everything. No, the claims are overlapping. It is true that China is claiming uh, most of it, but the claims are uh, overlapping. So meaning we have overlapping claims with Vietnam, with Malaysia, to a certain extent Brunei, and China. Mm -hmm. No, So... Um, to, to uh, your question, do we want it legally binding? Of course, that's the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. But what's the problem in international uh, relations with, with uh, legally binding? 
in 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 our in the local in in our um, countries we have a system so in the philippines for for those who are not from here if you are uh, from the same place you go to the barangay first you cannot go to the court without the barangay to certain cases then you go to court if you don't believe in the decision of the court you appeal and then you appeal you appeal until the decision is final when the decision is final or if you get an execution pending appeal, you have the people who will enforce it. Okay, when it comes to international relations, let's say North Korea is a signatory to, inter to uh, binding uh, agreements, to legally binding, who will enforce it? So we want legally binding because it's better for all the claimant states. But we have to negotiate going there. So if China is saying now that they're going for binding. Let's, will we stop talking to them? Let's continue talking to them, but let's continue to push for legally binding. The problem with legally binding, very practical, I'll give you, I, I'm okay. I, I'll follow President Duterte, I'm okay till 1 a.m. <laughs> Thank you. So um, the, the problem with legally binding, you know, is okay, what are the penalties? And if the penalties, uh, what are the mechanisms for, for, uh, for, for adjudication? Mm -hmm. What tribunal, what court? Oh, and then after that, who will enforce? Mm -hmm. So I think some countries are just being practical by saying it's easier mm -hmm. to have a binding rather than legally binding. Yes. But that doesn't mean that we're going to give up on coming up with a legally binding uh, COC. Yes. Now, last point. If you go back and say that, you know, but China did this, China did that, Philippines did this, uh, Vietnam did this, uh, yeah. then we'll never move forward. There, there's no doubt that we do, we do not like the actions of some uh, players, including China, in the past. What we're saying is we're making progress, so we have to do better. No, but if we keep regressing, in, in peace talks, how will we finish the peace talks if every time we talk, we'll say, eh, si ganito, pinatay mo, ikaw naman, si ganito, pinatay mo. If, yes. we keep, if we keep going back, you go back to the past so that you don't repeat it in the future. Yes. Okay. But if you go back in the, the past just to scold, in the past, we were strong in our statements because they wouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. okay. or, or, but now that uh, there is peace and stability and there's uh, goodwill there, that is the approach we're taking, and we think it's working. Okay, uh, just, I'm gonna pack Go two questions into sure, one, so that sure. we keep time. Uh, sir, um, of course, the ASEAN is looking looking after the interests of the individual members. I'm sure you would agree. So I guess what Filipinos and the region. Yes, uh, I guess what Filipinos are asking for, looking for, uh, is the assurance that the COC will mean more than the DOC has meant. So my, my question number one is, so what ways are being implemented to make sure that the COC is going to count significantly more than the DOC? And number two, just for the record, sir, uh, please pardon this question. Go ahead, go why on. not just mention the arbitration? Uh, why, 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 the re why, why not mention it? Because we won't make any progress. China already said, if you talk about the arbitration uh, award, there's no talks. So would you rather that we be tough on paper and shove it in their face and nothing happens in the South China Sea? Or would you rather we talk diplomatically and we get all the results? What's the guarantee of the Filipino people? What's the guarantee of the fishermen? They're now be able to fish there. What's the guarantee of future generations? Now the spawning grounds of, uh, of the fish are being uh, guarded by both coast guards. Uh, now the, the, the giant clams and the areas with marine resources that need to be guarded are guarded by both coast guards. Now the Philippines and China are talking. Now we are cooperating and doing things together. We have a problem in, um, in Mindanao. Who gave us free guns and ammunition? So, you know, it, it's, it's not about words, about documents, about signing. Look at the actions. Look at the strength of the relationship. Look at the direction. So if you're, if, if you're going to tell me that, you know, sir, there's no improvement and the situation is getting more unstable, then by all means you can ask me why not use the decision. But when we, when we agreed with China, you know, the president has been very clear about this many, many times. 
He said, I am, he, he never said he abandoned the decision. He never said he's tearing it apart. So those reports that are saying that uh, sinayang niya, you know, th that's local politics. Eh? That's people hitting the president. President said, I will put it aside first, and there will be a proper time to talk about it. But let me ask you a direct question. If I ask China, China fisheries, and on one hand, I refer to a document. On the other hand, I just give them a map. And I get the work done with the map versus the decision. If you were in my place, what would you do? Would you use the decision or would you use the map? Sorry, sir. I, I if you were in my place. Sorry, sir. I don't seem to, I don't understand uh, what you're driving at. Uh, what I'm driving at is results. Mm -hmm. Ano bang gusto natin? Away o magkaayos tayo dyan sa South China Sea? Do we want to just pick a fight for the sake of picking a fight? Or do we want our interests protected in the South China Sea? So if in one way, if I'm using the decision and we're getting nowhere, versus not using a decision and using other means, other documents, other historical documents, but we're getting, ma making progress, you'll, you'll, you want to go back? Because you said, excuse me, let me ask, why aren't you using the decision? Because we're, we're, we're following our national interest. And our national interest is to push for our claims in that area, and we're gaining ground doing it by talking in a friendly manner, building trust with China. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. You. The secretary would have to go to the lighting ceremony at CCP. He is the keynote speaker there, so. Uh, as, as long as you don't report I'm absent from there, <laughs> because I'm with you, I can stay. <laughs> Oh, oh, sir, uh, maybe one other yeah, question okay. from another topic. Hong Chun from China Central Television. Secondary, I would like to know, because uh, Chinese President, President Xi sent a congratulatory uh, message to President Duterte, and he said that the 50th anniversary of ASEAN uh, is an opportunity to tighten the relationship between China and ASEAN, especially we can create a communi community of shared future of mankind. So I would like to know what's your comments about this issue and the, how can we deeply further the relationship between Russia and China step by step in the future? Thank you, sir. First of all, I think it was a very productive and constructive uh, dialogue and conference and meeting. I think we achieved, uh, we, we achieved uh, I was going to say lahat, uh, we, were gonna, we achieved everything we set out to achieve in this meeting given the, the expectations. There's much, much more work to do. I think, uh, you know, even the claimant states have said that peace and stability is paramount. And we recognize the positive uh, direction that is being taken. So I could uh, honestly say that uh, the relationship of ASEAN and, and uh, China improved and strengthened uh, over this uh, uh, ministerial meetings. Uh, but let me just also state this. No? There's no shame in having good relations with any state, even if there are uh, disagreements. So we are proud with our relationship with China. We're proud with our relationship with Japan. We're proud with our relationship with Russia. So the President Duterte is simply saying, don't tell us what to do. Take care of our individual relationship. You know. Don't tell us what to do. Let us pursue our own national interests. Now, for the local media, it is your job, and we respect that, to hold us accountable that we are indeed producing results for the people. So my point is that the results should not be only a piece of paper or a decision. I'm not downgrading it to a piece of paper. I'm just saying you look at the situation, the factual situation in the ground. You know, it's like another country coming up with a piece of paper that this is the number of people dead in the Philippines. But can you not look if the streets are safer? And why are they dead? Were they killed extrajudicially or because uh, there is a legitimate drug campaign and they fought against the police? So I think overall the, the relationship between ASEAN and China is improving, Philippines and China. China has close allies and friends in the individual states of ASEAN. Definitely the, the uh, uh, overlapping claims in the South China Sea has caused uh, 
frictions or in uh, ano ba sa English yung lamat may lamat sa relationship it, it caused uh, uh, a bad uh, a fracture in the relationship but like young people fractures heal and uh, with the right nurturing and with mutual trust you know um, the fracture can disappear and you can be stronger so we're looking forward to doing great things with our dialogue partners Thank you very much, sir. Um, Secretary. Yeah. Sorry, I'm Hi. just oh. following my bosses. Sorry. You know, you cannot uh, negotiate with uh, protocol officers. Okay. So can I stay in like 30 minutes? Okay. Yeah, sir. Okay. okay. So just a related um, question. Having just said all oh, that... Please introduce um, yourself, please. I'm Yan from Phoenix TV Hong Kong, and um, having just said all that, um, can I just get your comments on the strong statement released by um, US, Australia, and Japan on the South China Sea, on the sidelines of ASEAN meetings? Uh, Japan, Australia, and US are our friends. US is our treaty ally, but we have told all countries around the world, we are a sovereign nation, we will decide what is good for us, what strategy is good for us? Because we are a sovereign nation. So we respect their views. But the problem of territorial dispute between China and the Philippines is between China and the Philippines. Just as China, Russia, Japan, and the other countries are not telling us what to do regarding our dispute with Vietnam, with Malaysia, and Brunei, we expect nations not to tell us what to do. But you have to understand that they also have their foreign policy and their interest. And some of these interests intersect with all of ours. For example, freedom of navigation and overflight. Everyone is for that. But, but we have different definitions. So again, may I reiterate, we are not pro-China, pro-US, pro-Japan, pro-whatever. We're pro-Philippines and we're pro-ASEAN. And because we're pro-ASEAN and we're pro-Philippines, we are good friends to China, we are good friends to Japan, we are good friends to US, and we will appreciate not being told what to do because we are a sovereign nation. And that is the instructions of my president, and I serve at his pleasure. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Maybe one more question, please. Good evening, sir. I'm Toru Morinaga from the Daily Mania Shimbun. So I'd like to ask you the meeting between Japanese Foreign Minister Kono and President Duterte. I heard it took 40 minutes. So please let us know what they discussed, specific topic and details. Thank you. Well, we very much welcome the appointment and the arrival of uh, Minister Kono. We know... Uh, it is, I think, just his fifth day today. But we are very thankful that he decided to attend the conference, to participate very actively, to articulate Japan's uh, positions in different um, uh, issues. I think we see eye to eye with Japan in uh, many, many issues. Um, they had a very good, uh, frank discussion with the president. It even went over time. Uh, most of the discussion was on anti-terrorism and the support of Japan. But the president also took the opportunity to thank uh, President, uh, Prime Minister Abe for the support in anti-terrorism, for the support in Marawi, and for the infrastructure program that uh, Japan and Philippines is working with uh, together. You know? So it was quite a long meeting, but uh, the meeting went along those, those uh, lines and, uh, of course, encouraged uh, uh, the other visits, you know? the reiteration of... Uh, possibility of President Duterte visiting uh, uh, Japan and uh, our welcoming uh, Prime Minister Abe in uh, November. Thank you, sir. So uh, it's reflective of the very strong and warm relations of Japan and the Philippines. Do you have a follow-up? What's follow-up in Japanese? <laughs> I think it's the same. Uh, may I ask, is there any new offer from Japan or something? New offer? 
Uh, they, there was a general offer to let them know what, uh, how they can help, especially in uh, anti-terrorism, and it was a reiteration that reiteration that Japan is a good friend of the Philippines and is ready to help. But there's so much uh, a cooperation agreements now, and there's so much uh, ongoing that we're very thankful. Thank you, sir. Uh, maybe one more question. Uh, Thank you. I'm a um, Manchin newspaper from Japan, and I've yes. got two questions. Uh, first is, why it takes some long time to disclose their uh, ALF chairman statement? <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, any, uh, some, any different opinions over the Korean Peninsula issue or the South China Sea? No, it's just no. Uh, we usually, my, my personal style mm -hmm. is to come out with the statement after the dialogue, not before. Even if in diplomacy everything is talked about by the senior uh, officials and there are all documents, I've learned in Philippine Congress that it's best to wait for the actual meeting uh, before we come out with the uh, documents. And since it all happened uh, yesterday, uh, I only had time to review it after. So we had the grand celebration. Then the before that, the president met the ASEAN ministers, the dialogue partners, then I joined him with the bilateral with Japan. Um, and then I had three bilateral meetings also with New Zealand, the EU, um, and India. So uh, by the time I was able to review it, um, it was time to go to see you. So it took me some time to. Sorry, I, think, uh, I think there were severe uh, uh, discussion over the uh, Korean Peninsula ratio or South China Sea. So, was it a bit difficult for you to make the statement? Uh, not difficult because there's unanimity, more or less, in the stand regarding uh, uh, DPRK. So, but it, it delayed because I had to get all the inputs. Okay. But I think it's very reflective. All four, uh, all four or five documents are very reflective of the common stand. Okay. Uh, let me uh, ask you one more question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, were there uh, any progress over the East, East Timor uh, as a new member of the ASEAN? It's under consideration. Yeah, so they, what's, they're filling the requirements. <laughs> yes. I, I just verified, but I'm there. So we, we told East Timor that um, there is support, uh, but they have to fulfill the requirements, and they're doing everything to fulfill the requirements. So. Uh, we, we have to go through the process. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think 